What's up, Liron here, and today I want to show you how I painted this portrait painting of Lil Wayne. What's up, Liron here? Thank you for joining me in another video. And today we're gonna have a full painting process of this Lil Wayne portrait painting. I'm gonna get the camera a little up close so you can actually see the details. This is a portrait I did with a bit of a different approach uh, than usually. Uh, I usually do it in a few glazes. With this one, I aimed to do it in as few layers as possible. I went by Stan Miller's method. I'm gonna link it down below step by th step the entire way and try to get almost all values in on the first wash, uh, which is why I think there's a nice little variation in what it looks like. Uh, so I think you're gonna really enjoy this one. And if you like this, uh, the Lil Wayne's music, uh, then even more so. He's a bit crazy, but I love some of his work. Um, in any case, uh, this is it. I'm gonna show you the entire process. I actually filmed it uh, from two angles. Uh, so I may incorporate some of that. The thing is I, I filmed the other angle like this, like for a phone. Uh, because I was, it, it was originally meant, I have the process itself like normally, but then I also have another angle of me actually sitting down at the table, table working and it's more of a vertical orientation. Uh, so I don't know if it will fit, but I'll try to fit it in here. Uh, and I really hope you enjoy this one. I think it's really interesting to see me approach a portrait in a bit of a different way than I usually do. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting with the first wash and this one's gonna be uh, fairly light. Um, trying to indicate, uh, actually starting with the lightest parts, leaving a few highlights for the white. Um, and I'm trying to vary the paint as I go along. This is one of the most important parts for me uh, because it's a look I like. I like when you look at the portrait at the end and you can recognize uh, a multitude of colors and uh, it's just interesting. Now my approach here again is very different from what you've seen from me uh, I think recently and in portraits in general uh, and that is that uh, I'm trying to get the value variation uh, to be somewhat accurate on the first go. Uh, so you see me putting in darks and putting in lights and medium values. So I'm trying to put everything in. Now this is a big challenge uh, or a bit of a challenge, uh, depending on your skills, I guess, uh, because what, what I find challenging in this is the fact that the paint merges together. So when you put a very light wash and then a dark one next to it, uh, the dark wash has a tendency to spread onto the light wash where there is more water. Uh, so that adds a, a, an extra layer of difficulty. Uh, but the thing is that even if everything is kind of blended together, uh, you get a chance to fix everything in the next wash as long as you didn't go too dark. That's the main point. As long as you didn't go too dark, you still have a chance. Uh, in terms of the colors I'm using, I'm using uh, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Rose or Alizarin Crimson, same thing, and Nickel Azo Yellow. This is kind of the, tr the, the trio that I decided to work with and I may use a bit of Carbazole Violet for the extra dark parts uh, that uh, I may not be able to produce just with the three paints or alternatively will be easier to produce with the Carbazole Violet. Um, and I'm trying to avoid putting in too much. Uh, you see there's already a lot of blue and red and violet and purple. So I'm trying to avoid overdoing that. So I'm adding uh, also a bit of yellows and reds. Uh, now here you have to be careful. There's a very subtle, um, I find the three main areas that challenge me are the mouth, the eyes and uh, maybe the nose, but usually it's like two eyes and the mouth. That's the areas that I find the most challenging really. They're super difficult for me. There's a lot of intricate shapes there uh, and it's hard to simplify them and it's even hard to portray them as you see them. Uh, so I'm kind of taking my time with these areas. Uh, the left eye I skipped, I just did an initial wash because it's all in the shadow anyway. Uh, in the right eye, I, I, well, it's to our right, his left eye I'm waiting on. I'm, I still haven't gotten to it. Um, the nose is a bit of a challenge too, but not as much I find. Uh, so you see I'm just adding the shapes where I see them. I see dark, I put dark. I see light, I put light. Uh, and if they blend together, that's fine. Uh, I'm alternating between, I started with my Raphael brush, size 12. It's a very uh, soft uh, bristle. 
Uh, and now I'm, I switch to my Princeton size 12. Uh, this one has a bit more spring to it and it allows more accuracy, synthetic um, bristles, which is really good. It's one of my favorite brushes at the moment uh, for finer details, uh, but it does start to lose its tip. So uh, I'll have to soon find a different solution for that, get a new brush. Um, and yeah, so now you see there's a lot of intricate shapes there in the eyes. And uh, one of the things that I find challenging, and I talked about it in uh, the last episode of Painting Masters as well, uh, is getting the facial expression to look right, getting that smile. Uh, and you can really feel the smile in the reference photo. And, and in the painting, it's still not there because I'm still, I still need to add some... Uh, details. So for example, to the left of his nose, you see there's a, in the reference, there's a very sharp curved dark line indicating that the cheek is rising uh, because of his smile. I still haven't gotten that fully indicated in the painting. So that's another thing that will, uh, th as soon as I put it in, you'll see, and I'll put it in later on. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts, actually, the hand. It's really fascinating how you can just put in a bunch of values that are correct, and you'll get the shape right, even though I'm using so many different colors here. Uh, there's a bit of noise from the road outside. I hope you don't hear too much. Sorry about that. Uh, so you see now I'm trying to light it up in the middle and then at the very center of the palm where it's super dark, I'm going to put in, in just a moment, a very dark uh, color and then it'll start building the shape of the hand. And this is a very uh, interesting method of, of working and you know, I'm sure many of you have heard of Stan Miller. Uh, he's the the person I got the method from and, and it's it's all about the values and the, and the drawing being accurate and that's it. You can use whatever color you want and it's very freeing. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time, how do I choose my colors? And I just pick them randomly, to be quite honest. If I see a light area, I may use yellow. If I see a mid value, I'll use red and then dark, I'll use blue. But overall, it's pretty random. Uh, I do make sure I choose reference photos that have a good contrast in the clear values that, that aren't too complex. If there's a strong contrast, it's even better. It's a plus uh, because stronger contrast is easier to describe with watercolor, with any medium probably. Um, and when you have a contrast that's very subtle, it, it gets a little harder. You have to be more accurate and, and gradual with the changes of values. Um, so that's uh, that's that. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention. I also, the paper is Saunders Waterford, my favorite type, uh, 300 grams, um, uh, cold press, which I love the texture. Uh, and yeah, so now I'm pretty much done with the first wash and I'm starting to darken things up that I haven't gotten the chance to. Now you see as I put these values next to his left eye that's to our right, it's starting to take shape and you can feel the smile. Um, another thing you want to make sure you avoid is blowing up the highlights, meaning doing them completely white. I kind of sinned in that way here that the forehead is almost white, but that's fine. The teeth, however, they aren't fully white. You see, there's a lot of gray there. Uh, another area that, and by the way, here's the second angle. This is what I wanted to mention. I recorded from two angles. Uh, and now because you don't see too much on the left, I decided to add it and just have that extra angle. And, and you have to see how my head bobs up and down because I'm, I keep looking at the reference. I'm not guessing anything. All of the answers, everything I need is there. Uh, so I don't have to guess. Uh, so yeah, so now I'm starting to strengthen again some of the shadows that I missed. Uh, oh, I was talking about the highlights. You don't want to blow these up too much and lose the color because most highlights have a very subtle color in them. They can be cool, they can be warm, but they do have a, s a very gentle color that you don't want to lose. Uh, and when you turn it white, you tend to lose it. Now, sometimes it is true that you need to use white. Sometimes it's an exaggeration. I like to stay loyal to the source in what matters. So I'll be loyal in the values and the drawing. But other than that, like the merging of the shapes, the colors, I'll be very loose. I'll change things around. Even composition I will change. Um, and, but I'll still keep the drawing of the elements within the composition accurate. You see what I mean? Uh, I hope that makes sense. This, a lot of advanced concepts that go into painting in general uh, and in this example portraits and you can see the more I add a, a bit of a dark spot here a bit of a darker patch there it starts to take shape and you can feel almost instantly the 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 smile tightens and the 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 expression becomes clearer uh, the left eye for example I still have a lot of darks to add there and once I do 
uh, it'll look much better. The only things that are close to white here are the earbuds, the her, his teeth, and some shapes in the on the uh, forehead. But other than that, it's all pretty dark. Um, so you want you want to make sure you get that because it's important. Once you lose the highlights, you won't be able to tell what's wrong, but something will be off and it will frustrate you. So. Uh, it's much better like that. Uh, now, to add a bit of a different dimension, in just a moment, I'm going to add some dry brush uh, to his um, uh, beanie. Uh, and that's going to create some uh, texture. And also, because there's a lot of blended colors in here, uh, I felt like it needs some sharpness. And so you'll see you now the forehead had a bit of a darker patch there. Um, strength Strengthening some of the deeper shadows. But then you'll see how that sharp dry brush uh, adds a lot of uh, interest and effect to the to the beanie. Uh, but first we're gonna get uh, rid of the background. I'm just following the values I see. There's a guy sitting to his left. So that's kind of the shape I'm putting there, but very abstractly because I don't want it to take too much attention. Uh, I also want the background to be relatively smooth, not too much harsh edges uh, because that'll push it to the background the way I want it to be pushed, okay? Uh, and we'll keep uh, little Wayne's face in the foreground, in the in the clear foreground. Uh, we'll create this interesting contrast between the two that works really well. So now final shadows to the beanie and finally I'll do in just a moment the dry brushing of it. Um, and that'll really create an interesting effect, I think. So you can see how the lines are a bit broken. Uh, but because it's uh, this is a rel rather small painting, then you don't get too much of a broken effect. And we're really near the end of this process. And in just a few moments, I'm going to show you uh, some of the final results. I'm going to show you first uh, the entire thing. Now I'm just signing it. Here's the entire painting. Uh, and after I removed the tape, it looked like that. So this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this process. And with this, uh, I think everything went exactly the way I wanted it to. Couldn't have asked for a better result. Uh, and I actually want to continue exercising in working um, in this kind of method uh, and see where it gets me um, with a bit more of a larger pieces, I guess, because this is rather small, as you can see, compared to the size of my hand. This is about an eighth of a sheet, maybe. So it's really small size uh, and when you work larger you have more freedom to exploit um, uh, dry brush and, and a bit more effect. You have more freedom of movement which is good for me. I love to have that freedom of movement. So I really hope you enjoyed this process. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like it, like physically actually like it. I would really appreciate it. It helps more people discover it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. If there's anything you want me to show more of, to talk more about. I'm actually really curious about something. I'm on a kick of figuring out what uh, artists struggle with uh, internally, psychologically. So I'm really curious to know, let me know what your biggest struggle is or the thing that really you feel like may keep you back or hold you back. I'm really curious about that and hopefully maybe I can uh, talk a bit about, discuss a bit about these topics if, if I have any, uh, you know, useful insights. So with that being said, I want to thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid real soon.